and you, you can just either um, count me in and then go one, two. Hi, I'm Andrew Moore, the project manager for Clubs Tasmania, and welcome to episode four of our winter webinar series. Today, it's all about the digital world, and joining us from the government's Digital Ready program is Talora. Talora, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Oh, that's fantastic. We're very lucky to have an expert with us, really, to help the community club industry out there make sure that the digital tools and the social media platforms that they're using um, promote their club, their values, and make sure that the, the images that they're putting out into the marketplace uh, can be used to attract players, to attract sponsors, um, and actually in fitting those bills. So you're going to help us through that process today, which is fantastic. Um, through the, um, the episode of the webinar, we might have um, some people dial in and join us. If they do, I'll ask some questions. Um, I'll just interrupt. I'll take myself off the pictures and um, just pop my microphone on mute. So really, it's all about you. You're, you're comfortable with that, Talora? Yeah, that sounds perfect to me. Um, exactly how I like to roll. So easily done. Fantastic. All right. Well, tell us a little bit, um, as I said, Clubs Tasmania is all about supporting and strengthening the community club industry so that um, clubs can thrive and survive into the 21st century. So uh, part of today is about giving um, clubs the skills. Tell us a little bit about your experience in community club land. Yeah, so I um, have uh, been in a few clubs over the years, but just recently I was with a local um, Northern Tasmania uh, netball club. I had a um, yeah great experience great love going back to netball. I've always loved playing it when I was younger. And so I decided that I wanted to go back and um, give it a crack when I'm a little bit older. So I just um, became part of a club a couple of years ago and it was so much fun. I'm a bit of a team player. I'm a bit competitive, so I like to win. Um, but it was just really nice to go back into a club environment like that and play a team sport where we're all um, I guess there for one reason and we really love netball. So yeah, it was really good. And as part of that experience, I got, a, got to go on a committee. So I got to see um, how those clubs are organised and how everything works behind the scenes and how it all comes together because there is a lot of work that goes into that. So um, yeah, it was a really great experience. At the moment, I'm not going to be playing with that club. I'm actually looking for a new club um, to join just um, to have a see what else is out there, I guess, um, at the moment. Oh, all right. Hey, well, thank you for sharing that. That's a really good example of like the rich tapestry that's involved in, in the community club industry. As I said, you can you can go and play, you can go and volunteer, or you, as you sort of said, when, you, when your face lit up, you can go and have some fun and, and, and it's a social opportunity for you at whatever age you are. So that's fantastic. Thanks for sharing that. All right. Well, without further ado, you are going to run us through with some slides. Um, as I said, it takes about 30, 35 minutes to run us through. We'll take questions as we go. Um, I might just probe. I'll turn my um, video off and I'll also uh, take, turn off my microphone and to let you run the show. But to Laura, Dem and Francis, the show is yours. Over to you. Awesome, thank you. Now I'll try and keep this as um, into that timeline as close as possible, but what I'm gonna do with you now is just share my screen so that you can see um, the slides that we have. So I'm just bringing them up. So can you see those slides now? Just wanna double check that they're working. Sorry, they're just loading. Internet's been a bit slow. So can we see those slides, Andrew, on your end? Excellent. Um, so I'm going to go through this presentation for you guys today. Um, so I am Talora, as Andrew uh, mentioned. I'm from King Thing Marketing. We are a marketing agency based in the north of the state in Launceston. So we do all things um, that you can think of when you think of marketing. So we build websites, we manage social media accounts, um, we write strategy, we do graphic design. So absolutely everything that you can um, think of, we do. And um, so it's pretty cool. So everything that I get to chat with you guys about today is things that I do each and every day. So I understand some of your frustrations with um, social media if you're using that as part of um, your club's uh, 
uh, marketing efforts at the moment. Um, so I can feel your frustrations when you're on there and things change all the time. So you don't know how to use it pro uh, properly. And I understand your frustrations when it comes to developing a website. I'm also here today because of the Digital Ready program, as Andrew mentioned. So the Digital Ready program is a really um, great program that's um, made from, oh, well, it's been developed by the Department of State Growth. Um, so the program is for any business or club in Tasmania who has an ABN um, to access presentations like this one, um, completely free, of course. Um, and generally we do normally go across the state and deliver these, but at the moment we are delivering them through our website. Um, and so we will continuously upload new presentations with different theme topics each month. Um, and then they'll have worksheets and they'll have the actual video presentation and along with that there's also heaps of tools and resources on that website for you to access. The other part about the digital ready program. Did I just hear that correctly? So, so it's a free program for any community club if they just reach out on those numbers and uh, the website there and you'll, sh you'll show them and help them improve this and it's free, is that right? Um, so the first bit that I was just talking about is just the website and how we have the presentations that there are um, able to access. I'm just about to chat about the two hours free mentoring and training that they are eligible for. So this is where you can come and you can ask whatever questions you have on marketing. So whether it be about websites, social media, absolutely anything you can um, engage in this two hours free mentoring and training with someone like myself. So I'm one of the digital coaches um, in the state and you can contact via the website link there or the um, hotline number that has been developed and that's where you can come in and book an appointment at the moment we're doing those sessions via zoom just um, like this webinar is and that's purely for the fact that we can't be face to face during these times um, and so we can still share our screens with each other and have those conversations um, that we need to about whatever marketing that you need to access but it's completely free and you're eligible for it every calendar year so it's a really good opportunity to do it each year to help improve your skills and learn what else is new in the um, marketing world. Sounds awesome. There we go. All right, I made a little note of that. So every year you're eligible for that. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a really great initiative. And if we can get anything from free from the government, we should always take it up. Um, and yeah, so um, I will remind you about that at the end just to um, touch base on that again. Um, so today we're going to be talking about communicating, communicating through the digital world. Um, so we're going to go through a snapshot of the digital world. We're then going to go through um, digital channels to be using. We're then going to go through how to communicate through your content. So how can we effectively do that on social media and our website? I'm going to provide you a couple of content tips and some tools and resources to help make your lives a little bit easier when you are doing these things in the digital world. So the first thing that we're going to go through is how to put this into context. And the reason that I wanted to do this was to just, I guess, show to those um, clubs that may not have a website or may not have social media at the moment, why you would want to be in this space. So almost eight in 10 people um, now use social media. So that's 79% of us within Australia are on a social media channel. So it is a really important, um, I guess, resource or tool for us to be able to communicate with people because we know they are online. Um, it's a way that we've already got a captivated audience and we can reach them through this channel um, quite effectively if we use it in the right way. What is the most surprising one um, to a lot of people is this next slide. So this next slide goes through the usage um, of social platforms in Australia by age. No surprises there that the younger generation definitely use it a lot more. But what I do find when I get to this slide is that a lot of people are shocked by the fact that 47% of um, people aged 65 years and older even use the platform. That might not be um, important for some of you, but it could be for some of those of you who might have a bowls club um, where you want to attract that older type of demographic. So, even though you think that maybe it is a young person's platform, it is important to note that it can be used by that older generation as well. And especially because of COVID, we are finding the increase of people um, 
going online and using social platforms to connect with family and friends has um, been quite a dramatic increase. So this was last year's figure. So it'll be really interesting to see um, the new figures that come out of um, out of COVID uh, with this user by age, because I was looking at a report the other day and it was saying that um, Facebook have had an increase of 70% of new subscribers to the platform and a lot of them appear to be from that older demographic. So I would imagine that those numbers in those older years are going to definitely climb. And so that's why it's super important for you to think about getting online and getting onto those social channels now so that when the time comes, um, for you guys to reopen if you haven't already, um, then you are able to communicate to those audiences about what you're doing post COVID-19, but also um, able to build that community up now um, so that it'll reach more effectively in the long term. Hey, to Laura, just while you have a breath there, I've got a question that one of the clubs has asked is, is what in terms of their volunteers and their committees, is, is this now a role that should be on the board and on the committee that with, with a skill set to be able to, to manage this? Or is it a role that someone say, oh, you just do that? What, what are your thoughts around that? Yeah, no, definitely a great question. Um, I actually volunteer for another group. It's not a club, but it's a um, charity. And as part of that charity, we actually have a role called PR and communications. And as part of that PR role, their job is to run our social media channels. And we think that it is a really critical role in helping um, communicate our message out there to the community. So I would suggest that if you haven't already, try and have that role within your club. I understand with social media, it can be... Um, really difficult, I guess, to have one person managing it. And I know that going forward for our um, organisation, for the charity that I'm volunteering for, we're looking at having more than one person in that role and maybe one person manages one social account while another manages the other social account just so that there's a little bit more of a sharing aspect um, but they'd still communicate with each other about what they're sharing. Um, so that was just more to share the load but um, we do see it as super important to have it as a role within the committee because otherwise it tends to get forgotten about. All right, that's a great take home message that we can use. And when you talk about those platforms, that'll be something that we will go through for the rest of the webinar and also that'll be available through that digital coaching about which platform is right for your club. Yeah. Yes, exactly right. So we'll go through that soon, I promise. Okay. Um, so the next slide that I wanted to share with you is more around um, websites. So 89% of us um, in Australia turn to Google to look for an answer to our problem. So when we're wanting to know about a product or a service, or in this case, if we wanted to join a club and we wanted to know an answer to what club we should join, we would go to Google and we will type in for example, netball clubs in the Launceston area, um, soccer clubs in Hewenville. Um, and so they're going to go there for those answers. And if your club doesn't have a website, your answer isn't going to come up to that person. So they're more likely not going to join your club because they don't know you exist. So it is important that we start to think about how are other people in the marketplace looking for our clubs and how important it is to have a website. For you guys in particular, when I go through some of the channels in a minute, um, I would highly suggest that a website is your first Port of call that people would probably go to when they're looking for your club, especially if they're new to the area or they're new to thinking about wanting to join that type of sport, that they're going to go to Google, they're going to look for those through websites and then they're going to use social media as more of a, a place to go and look at what sort of club you are to understand your values, understand your culture and get a feel as if it's a right fit for them or not. So I could see that having a website is really critical for you guys. Um, to be able to grow your clubs further into the, um, and grow, yeah, grow them further. And lastly, um, as part of this snapshot, I wanted to share the impact of you being in this digital landscape. So whether it be through having a website, having social media or having both, um, there are so many different opportunities that you can have, uh, you can gain through doing this. So one of them is um, that you could gain new sponsors, and that's going to be really difficult, I guess, post COVID-19 for some of those um, sponsors that you may have had previously, they may have lost a lot of income during this time. So they may not be able to give as much as they normally would. So we might have to go out there and search for new sponsors. 
So it is going to be really important that we think about that when we are using our digital channels. And it's also a great space, I guess, if you do have a website and social media to share the love for those sponsors so that potential new sponsors can see that you appreciate the current sponsors that you have and that they know they'll receive that level of love if they were to become a sponsor for your club. It's also a chance for people to find that information about your club as I've already spoken about. Um, and again, attract those new members to the club if you wanna grow them further. And if we're doing both of those things by getting attracting new sponsors and attracting new members to the club, we're going to be able to generate more revenue um, so that we're able to continue functioning as a club, which I know is going to be really important post COVID-19. So now I'm gonna go through a couple of the digital channels that I would recommend um, for you guys to uh, have an account on. I will explain a little bit about who the audience is that are searching on these platforms and why it would benefit you. So I've already talked about it a little bit, but your website is going to be the hub of all your online activity. It is where people is going to go to look for um, your club if they are new to the area or if they're new to the sport and are looking for somewhere to join. It's also a place where people are going to go to get information about your club. So if you do anything with the media um, and you wanna get those stories in your local paper, they're possibly going to go to your website to learn a bit more about that information about your club to build that story. Um, into their piece. So it is important that it is, um, I guess, current and up to date so that they can collect the information that they need to find. Um, I've got a, a little note there that says it's your own piece of property in the digital landscape. And I guess for you guys in particular, it's one of the most important um, assets you could have as a marketing tool. Um, so really would encourage if you don't have a website to consider having a website. Um, there are really some easy platforms that you could build on um, that you'll be able to manage yourselves. And so some of those are Squarespace, uh, Wix, Weebly. If you're in the position as a club where you can enlist a um, developer, there are developers out there that would be able to help you. Um, so my, no, sorry, where I work at King Thing, we develop people's websites. And a part of that could be when you do go to those developers, you speak to them and you tell them that you're a club, they might even sponsor you part of that website. And the other option is to even look for them as a, a look for a web developer as a sponsor so they can come on board and build that and manage that website for you into the future. So just a couple of options, I guess, to consider when you are um, looking to have a website. Hey, to Laura, just while we're on that slide there, there's a picture of North Hobart Junior Football Club. And if you're listening to this, you, you can do yourself a favour and pop onto their website because one of the platforms that they do really well is their online shop, so all their apparel um, and uniform, all done online. And they do that really well. It's done through Square Shop or Squarespace, I think. Uh, and what that does is, is one, it increases and generates revenue for their club. Two, anybody, family, any age can go online and have a look at that product. And the third thing is it reduces the workload on the volunteer. So all that really needs to happen is the receipts produced and the equipment's given out at the social club rooms or at training during the week. So they do it really, really well if you want to go and have a look at that North Hobart Junior Football Club. Yeah, they really do. I was um, going to just about um, say that the shop facility is another option to consider when you do have that website. So if you do have um, your Guernseys that you want to sell or if you have hoodies or hats, um, you can use that as part of that shop facility and you can, yeah, like you said, generate some more income for your club. And I agree, they've done it, set it up quite nicely. It's easy from a user experience, which is what you would like. Um, so, as I said, website super important, possibly would consider making sure that you have one of those first, because that's going to be the first port of call for most people to go to when they're looking for your club. But in order to help build, I guess, that brand value and to build that community um, spirit and that, um, I guess, understanding of your culture at your club, that's where social media is going to come into it. And it's going to be used as kind of a backup to that website to use as a selling tool to potential new people or new sponsors to your club. The hardest thing can often be though, how do you select the social media platforms that are the right for your club? So I'm gonna go through a couple of them now and explain why you might use them. So Facebook, it's 
probably the most obvious one. Um, a lot of people have Facebook accounts. So 90% of um, social media platforms used within Australia, 90% of those people are on Facebook. Um, so it is the first platform that people do have an account on. It's used by a range of different age groups. Um, predominantly though, the most active users are actually the people aged 40 and above. And that's just because they um, were new to the platform. They had seen their kids playing around and they were like, what, what is Facebook? We're going to learn about it. And so they've now learned about it and they're using it really effectively. Um, so it's a great way to be able to communicate, I guess, with um, your mums and your dads um, to attract them to your club even if it's not um, even if you want to target that audience so that are 40 above you can use it for that but you could also attract the I guess your mums and your dads who have children that might want to participate in your club um, this is just an example of cycling Tasmania's Facebook page I think they do a really great job at posting consistently they also have really nice clear images on their site and um, they have a really good following. So they make sure that they keep that um, community that's following their page engaged all of the time. Um, Facebook is a really great tool to be able to share more information about your club. So when I talk about some of the other platforms, they're more predominantly um, image or video based where with Facebook, it gives us the opportunity to um, be a bit more in depth about our posts. If on your website, you had a blog post around a theme or a season or time of the year, you could share that blog post on Facebook with a little bit of commentary. Um, if you did have that shop set up on a website, you can also link that shop into Facebook and have that shop facility through the platform. Um, so yeah, there's a lot that you can do with your Facebook profile. It's nearly like it's a mini version of your own website, um, as well. So yeah, definitely one that I would say that every club would probably have as a baseline level. So if you aren't on social media as a club yet, this is the first one that I would, um, I guess suggest starting with. And as I said earlier, you might have one person manage different platforms. So you may have one person who just manages Facebook, but if you do, um, like most clubs, struggle to be able to get those large amounts of people to the committees, just um, having that one person who's in charge of Facebook and starting there for the next year or so will be really important for that growth that you're looking to achieve during that time. So that's Facebook. Oops, sorry. Hey, to Laura, just while you're clicking through to that next image, most of the images that we see on Facebook, they would be taken by like an iPhone. Like that's that's the only, you don't need like a $5,000 camera to take amazing images. It's, it all pretty much is covered by your, your iPhone if it's or a Samsung, whatever device you're using. Yeah, definitely. So years ago, we used to have to pay professional photographers. Now we're quite lucky because we're all, we all have access to a really great camera, whether it be through an iPhone or an Android device, they nearly have better cameras on them and most of that high tech technology um, cameras that people used to hire those professional photographers for. So super easy to be able to um, get really nice, clear photos. And I think I've got a couple of tips on um, photographs a little bit later on, but that is definitely one of them that we all have a great device for us to be able to access. Um, and I know most of them come with some cool features. So I have an iPhone and that has the rule of thirds um, square set up so that I can make sure that I'm following that rule when I'm taking pictures. It's got a mode called portrait mode, which is possibly one of my favorites where it really focuses on taking um, the, whatever my main focus is and then blurs out the rest of the background. So if you're taking pictures of players, it would really focus on those players and then just blur out the background. So it could be a nice way to feature those pictures on your Facebook page. That is a great tip to Laura. I've actually written that one down myself. I didn't know that. So you've been the teacher and I'm the student today. So already I'm learning. So All right, tell us about Instagram. Perfect. Um, so Instagram is a, um, I guess, newer platform than Facebook. It's been around though for nearly 10 years, I believe this year. Um, so Instagram is predominantly a image and video based platform. So it's all about, I guess, using it to communicate with um, in, in, in video and images. Um, predominantly the people that use, oh, sorry guys. Um, predominantly the people that use um, Instagram are the younger generation. Um, so they live on it, they breathe it. Um, it's how they sometimes even chat to their friends. Um, but we are starting to see a shift of mums joining Instagram. So they had Facebook, worked out that 
after a while, the kids are no longer using Facebook, so they've shifted to Instagram to see what they're up to. Um, they've then discovered this whole new world of um, social media and they are absolutely loving it. Um, so again, another way for you to attract um, those people who are probably making the decision in the household as to if their kids are going to join a club or not. Um, so it could be a good opportunity to target them. Um, I've used Northern Hawks here, Netball Club, as a, an example here. Um, so they use Instagram really, really well. Um, as you can see, they have little posts and all of them at the moment are actually uh, their videos and they link through to a full length video. And what they are is the team have actually in isolation been doing exercises at home. So they've been doing them through Zooms like this and they've been recording parts of them to create these little videos of their team still training at home and helping you with some tips at how to train at home as well. So they took the time to, I guess, um, think about the situation that's going on and what could they do to attract people to their page and make people connect with them during this time. So I thought that was really um, a great thing that they do. Um, the other thing that I wanted to share that I don't actually have a slide about that um, the Northern Hawks have done is that they are thinking about how they can continuously have that succession plan, I guess, as part of their netball team. And so with, what, with that, they've thought about what are some of the other channels that younger people are going on. So that is one of the reasons why they're on Instagram. So they're on there so that they can think about that succession plan and have the young people following them and thinking, I want to play for them when I'm 17 um, or older. Um, but the other thing that they have gone and set up is a TikTok page. So TikTok is the latest um, platform for young people to go and create short 15 second videos. They're quite fun. They involve lots of dances or really silly little things. But if you wanted to have a look at an example, and I didn't include it in this slide as I only learned about it the other day, but um, today actually, um, uh, they, uh, yeah, they've created a TikTok account and they're just creating little videos where they've each filmed little segments um, at their own home and created into this one video. And they're just a little bit of a laugh and a bit of fun. And I think that's a really smart way to attract new people to your club and grow that succession line further. So just thought I'd share that little bit of information that I learned today as well. Hey, Talora, one of the questions that we've got coming through is, okay, so if we're a club, how do you work out the security for whether it's Facebook, Instagram, or even TikTok, so that, you know, you don't get somebody posting an inappropriate video onto TikTok? Is, is there, there strategies around that we can monitor that and ensure the security for not only the users, but for your members of your club? Yeah, so... Great question and was something I definitely was going to raise, um, having even been part of that um, club, uh, I guess, committee before. Um, whenever you do have people who are in charge of your social accounts, try and keep it at a minimum. So I know before I said that you might have different people in charge of different platforms, but and that's completely fine, but don't have too many people. So when you create an account, don't go and share. So for example, with Instagram, don't go and tell too many people what the username and password is to access that account. With Facebook, you actually need to be added as an admin um, to that page to be able to um, post anything as part of the club. So try and keep that as a minimum um, and make sure that you've got people there that you know are probably really responsible and not going to post things that may make you a little bit weary. Um, I know that for myself, this um, when I'm dealing with businesses for them to make sure that they are happy with the posts that I'm going to be putting on their business page. We like to um, send them the posts of what we're going to be doing so that they can approve them before they go up on the page. So you could potentially set up that type of system within your club that if somebody wants to post something, you have somebody who's the key leader and you send them the posts for them to be approved before they go up. And the other thing to keep in mind is Committees do change all the time. So as soon as a new committee has changed um, or if something happens within the club and somebody leaves on bad terms, make sure that you change um, if they've had access to any of the social accounts, make sure you remove them as an admin off that page and make sure that you um, change any passwords you had associated with those pages because I have seen it happen before in other organisations where they haven't done that and then a disgruntled person who knew they had access to that has still got access and they've gone and done some posts that possibly you wouldn't want out there in the um, marketplace. Hey, Talora, that's a really good um, lesson for us is at the moment, um, in about three months' time, we're going to be launching what we call the Community Clubs Kit. And really, it's a tool for handover for boards and committees. 
because what, what quite often happens is because it's all volunteer and there's only so much time, people finish on a committee, but there's not a really fluid um, handover process. So we're trying to do, you know, those 101 for dummies books, we're trying to create it around like something like that. So there's just a little, simple list of dot points that, um, you know, clubs or new treasurers or new secretaries, et cetera. Um, so as I said, we're putting that together. Plus, we're also putting together a suite of digital platforms on our website. So there'll be videos there, again, supporting of how to be a treasurer, how to be a secretary, how to be a president, and just short, sharp messages to help a new board because we know that they turn over every couple of years and good practice is to have half your board turning over halfway through the period. So every 18 months, half the board step down, so half are left. But anyway, that'll all be on our website, um, hopefully by the end of September. So. Oh, that's fantastic. And I think they are going to be great resources that the clubs are going to be able to use. I guess another thing to even consider that I didn't mention just then is to have a social media policy within your club for everybody to sign. So not even just the people who, um, I guess, have access to those social media pages, but have a social media policy in place where your players um, are told that they can't um, defame the name of the club anywhere on social media that they need to if they are in any um, uniforms make sure that they are representing the club to the best of their um, abilities through social media all of those types of things because I have seen some um, I guess bad things happen within organizations and I know it would happen within clubs as well where those social media policies aren't in place and it just helps um, just everybody be on the same page about what would happen if they did breach those things as well, like did something wrong on social media. And of course, the, the, you can get those now that are on digital platforms. So you, the old days, you know, the old paperwork, you'd have to get your 250 members to sign it and it'd be a nightmare. Whereas now it can just be done via email. You receive it on your phone or your, your desktop and sign it and send it in, away it goes. Exactly right. And yeah, like I said, super important. So yeah, would definitely recommend having one of those in place at your club if you don't already. Um, I think that's all I had to share about Instagram. So yeah, other than the fact that it's just, yeah, a little bit more shorter, we try and use, um, I guess, more captivating um, photos in our Instagram posts. And that's just purely for the fact that it is that imagery based, um, video based platform. So we really want to captivate people's attentions. And as we spoke about earlier, we all have the technology to be able to take those beautiful um, images. And I'll talk about a couple of um, free tools to help you later on to even edit those photos that are even a little bit more crisper um, so that you feel in confident that it represents your brand online. Uh, the other thing with Instagram that um, could be really important for you guys to think about using is Instagram stories. So Instagram stories are the little circles that appear um, at the top of your Instagram feed. They have 500 million active daily users worldwide. A million of those are within Australia. Um, and what's great about Instagram stories is it's really good for being a bit more raw and genuine. And people tend to follow them because they want that authenticity and that genuine um, content that's being out there in the market rather than all this, um, I guess, uh, curated stuff that comes through the feeds that we often see. Um, so for you guys, using stories would be really good on game days so that you could take live footage of that um, event happening so that people can see what's happening. They can learn about the scores, all of those things that you might share afterwards, but it's about keeping them engaged during those games as well. So definitely something to have a play around with and how you could use those stories um, as part of your, I guess, sharing your story um, through social. The great thing with Instagram stories is you can actually link that up with Facebook stories so that they can go across to both platforms at the same time. So you don't have to duplicate content. I'm going to go to Laura, if I could just jump in, we've got a question there saying, so does that mean that Instagram stories could be if you're under 10 or under 12 netball side or football side are out there playing, that some footage could be filmed of like 60 seconds of the game, a quick snapshot of the scoreboard, um, and then that could be the story and uploaded. And then anybody who's following that page, and that's real life, so that's how you're staying connected and engaged to your, to your membership base, is that? Yep, no, that's correct. And so the other thing that I didn't mention with stories that I probably should have is that that content only lasts for 24 hours on your page. So it's referred to as ephemeral content. So it's all about being in the now, 
and knowing what's happening right then and there. It takes um, video footage in 15 second grabs, but you can create, add as many stories to your page as you like. So you can keep filming. So there's that full 60 seconds. And so what's great is you can kind of, I like to explain it as before, during and after a game. So you can share maybe a bit about before the game. You can share a bit of action during the game and the scores like at each quarter, for example, and then you can share the final score as well. So they're getting that full picture of that um, that game that's happening. So it's live and in the moment to keep people engaged. And you mentioned before about mums who have been massively drawn to, to Instagram. So I'm thinking that if you're at a junior netball or a hockey or basketball game on the weekend, there's more than likely going to be a mum there. Then that could be a role for a mum on a team to just basically do some filming and she could be loading that up for her team and bang, it's out there, they're connecting their club, their teammates. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I guess the hardest thing would be is if you had multiple teams and some of them were playing it at once, try and make sure that you put all of the one story either together or at least make it clear what game or what team that that particular story is about so that people don't get too muddled up. But most of the time you'd probably finish one and then you'd be moving on to the next one. So it wouldn't be too much of an issue, but it would be really easy for a mum to be able to do that. And speaking of mums, they possibly have more than one kid at different sport events that could be at the same time. So it's a way for them to, I guess, know what's happening at that game that they might not be able to make it to. Oh, that sounds like a fantastic strategy. Thanks so much for highlighting that for us. That's okay. Um, yeah, so the next platform that I'm just going to briefly touch on um, is YouTube. So YouTube is used by absolutely every age group. It's one of the only platforms out there where we cannot narrow it down to a specific type of user um, by age because when we look at the data, it's just so evenly spread out. Um, the benefit, I guess, of using YouTube in your club is to be able to use it as maybe um, a chance to have those team profiles where they come and talk a little bit about what your club has to offer. You might even have team members come and talk a bit about, about themselves. Um, you could share highlights from your season and create them all into one video. Um, I've used the example of AFL Taz because they actually put the full game up there so that people can go back and watch that um, later on if they really want to. Um, this might not be something that you have like you might not use straight away, but if you are feeling like your club is fairly advanced and you want to continue to grow, I guess, as a club, you could use YouTube as an opportunity to do that. Um, as I said, so many people are using it. And so if we can get their attention through it and we know that sporting is quite um, an active topic that's um, watched on YouTube. So yeah, definitely something to consider in the near future using um, and getting people to subscribe to so that they can either watch those full matches. So again, if you have family members who can't be at two things at once, they can go back and watch that game just in case you may have had the best game of your life their child might have and they might have missed it. They're still going to have that opportunity to go back and watch it. And like I said, you could also use it as more of a branding um, video tool so that you could create some little brand videos about your club that you could potentially also share through social media, but have on a channel like YouTube as well so that people can see that information. Um, and the other channel that I would recommend having is Google My Business. So Google My Business is absolutely free for anyone to set up. You just need to create a Gmail email address, which is free. And what it does is it provides people information directly um, about who you are, especially if somebody knows your name and they've typed that into Google, they're going to get this listing straight away. So it's going to point them to your website, to your contact number. Um, if you have a, a location where you're based, it will have that. It's going to have opening hours if you do have those. Um, reviews. So reviews are really important for people to consider when they're looking at joining um, a club. So they have a feeling of that word of mouth to know if it is actually what it says it is on the website or what it um, seems to display through its social channel. So you can have access to all of your reviews on there that you can ask people to leave on your Google My Business about um, being part of that club. So um, really something I would consider thinking about having just in case people do know your business name and are searching that through Google, then they've got this my Google My Business listing and you can consistently go back in there and update it if things change. 
and Google are updating new features to it all the time. So I think it's going to become um, a really good tool to use within the future. Um, and I think if we are early adapters using this tool efficiently, then we're going to be seen as, um, I guess, doing the right thing by Google, which is really important to help our websites rank on Google more effectively. And to Laura, you, 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 you mentioned there the word scary. So for a lot of like volunteers who might be running clubs, uh, they might have been doing that for a number of years. Yeah, the IT and all of these platforms can be a little bit scary, but you're making it really quite easy and saying, hey, it's actually not that hard. There's coaching and resources available there to help you. And look, and our advice would be just one step at a time. So choose a platform that's, you know, that might come out of the coaching that they get from you and your business. Uh, and then, as I said, one step at a time. Would that be the, the recommendation? Yeah, definitely. I'm a big believer in um, not trying to take on too much. And if, if you can't do it at all, I go for quality over quantity. So start off small, build it up over time and just grow your confidence level. Use those resources of the Digital Ready program, the Digital Ready website with all of those tools. Um, the internet is also a marvellous thing. YouTube videos, step-by-step um, -step guides are available for us to access. So if we were to Google something, we would probably find the answer that we're looking for. So there's um, other programs out there that will be able to help you as well. Um, so there's heaps of ways that um, I guess we can become less scared to use these platforms in the future. Okay, thank you for sharing that. What's next? So next we're going to go through um, some tips on how to communicate through your content effectively. Um, so the first thing to think about when you think of content is that it's not just words. So your content is the images that you're choosing, the video that you're using. And if your club has any collateral like flyers that they hand out, then that's a piece of content that you're putting out there in the marketplace. Um, so most importantly, what we're going to talk about today is what good content should look like and how you can use that content, I guess, across your social media channels and your websites, because both of those are using all of those types of content that I was just referring to. And so you need to make sure that they represent your brand in a really good way so that people can identify you really easily. So good content should always increase your brand awareness. You don't want to have content out there that's a little bit wishy-washy or it's not what you would normally post. You want to make sure that it's really consistent and so that it's always making, uh, telling that brand, um, I guess, story and that creating that brand awareness in the marketplace. Um, prior to about five years ago, it used to take seven times for somebody to look at a brand and remember that brand. It now can take up to 14 times for somebody to recall your branding if they've seen it um, a num that many times because we're so bombarded with so much um, information all of the time that we don't actually notice brands as easily. So it is getting a little bit harder, I guess, to cut through um, that traffic. So we need to make sure that if we're being consistent, we're going to increase that brand awareness. Um, the second thing is that good content should tell a story. And for every club, you have great stories to tell. It's your club's story and your history. It's the story of your players. It's the story of your teams. It's the story of the score from the weekend um, and about what happened there. So all of it is a, a story for you to share. And your users, especially through social media, are going to want to know that story. They're following you for a reason. They want to learn about your club. They want to know what's happening. So making sure that we're telling that story through our content is really um, I guess something that I would strongly suggest that you're doing and making sure that um, every time you're t telling your content, you're not just putting up a factual piece of information, you're really telling that story um, so that people can connect and engage with it. And of course, to Laura, something to remember is, is when we start that journey, you're not going to be an expert at it. You're not going to do it right the first, the second or the 33rd time but it's just about practicing, getting some feedback, maybe accessing some coaching. And over time, suddenly you'll be, you'll be nailing it, you'll be smashing it and everyone will be saying, hey, we love it. You, you'll find that your revenue might increase. You'll find that you might have more teams because people want to come and be part of those stories that you've shared previously. Exactly right. Yep, definitely. Um, the third thing that good content should do is it should build trust. 
So everything that we want to do when we're developing our websites or when we're writing social media, and again, this will take time to learn how to do that, but we want to make sure that we're building trust with people. So we want them to feel like that they know us and that they trust us and that they um, potentially could even want to join us in the future. So thinking about how we can build trust, um, I guess, in that content is also important. And lastly, being creative. So as I said before, it's getting harder to be able to be noticed in the marketplace. So if we're a little bit creative, um, that's completely fine because that's going to help us get noticed a little bit quicker. Um, and I don't want you to go too rogue, but what I'm just saying is that don't be afraid to think of new ideas, think of different ways to share your content with people because that's what's going to get you out in the marketplace quicker. Um, so I've talked about this a, a little bit already, but um, I guess for you guys in particular with clubs, your branding is really, I guess, how your club is known. And I know it can be difficult because some of you might have similar colours, but you all have your own um, logo mark that's been designed specifically for you guys. So, And that's the way your club is recognised immediately. So make sure when you're developing any pieces of content that that branding is consistent. So for some people, when they do their posts, they might think about how their colours need to be included in some of those posts or they might make sure that there is somebody in a uniform with that logo present in that image or video every time they post it on social media or, or there's a picture on the website. Um, it's also important that because it represents your brand's values and I think that that's a really important thing that people I guess don't think about when they are doing um, any pieces of content is that people can see your values in what you're posting. So if you put up a picture of people in the change rooms, they would think, oh, well, that, they're not really um, giving that privacy, which we wouldn't be allowed to do anyway, but this is just an example. Um, they're not really giving that privacy. I don't really like that they do that. I don't feel comfortable with them sharing my image like that, where if you had a photo of people that were out on the field and you could see that they were quite happy to be involved in that photo, then you can see that, oh, they look like they're a fun club or they look like they know what they're doing in their training sessions if you had a photo at one of your training sessions. So just think about how your brand's values are represented through your content as well. Um, your brand also helps to deliver a message about what you are offering. So straight away, it can tell people who you are as a club. So most of the time, you're going to have a club name that says football club, soccer club, bowls club, cycling it's going to tell people straight away about what you are offering them um, if they were to engage with you. And lastly, it sets you apart from the rest. So your branding is what makes you different. It's what makes you unique and special. So own it, use that to your advantage to be seen in the marketplace. Hey, to Laura, we've just got a question coming in here. So with COVID and um, a number of sports are, are returning to play, um, which commenced this week, would it be a good idea to um, take a video and post maybe the sanitizer dispenser or kids, uh, you know, they're washing the balls or they're using the hand rubs or, or is that is that a good idea? Yeah, I think that's a really good idea, especially at the moment. People are quite, I guess, concerned about um, how things are going to operate post COVID-19. So we want to show that we're taking that care and that we value people and the people's lives that are involved with us at the club. So we're doing all of these new measures, I guess, to make sure that we are being as safe as possible post COVID-19. So yeah, share that you're um, washing the balls if you have like pumps um, so that everybody needs to know that they need to um, use that hand sanitizer before they attend the training rooms. Yeah, I would definitely be sharing that message. Ah, look, there you go. That's a great message. And of course, that's a message that local government who own the resources where um, clubs are often training, um, potential sponsors and peak bodies, whether that's Hockey Tasmania, Basketball Tasmania, they're going to see those posts and they're going to have um, increased confidence and surety that your club is doing the right thing and that you're across it. And of course, parents and families, they want to know that their, their kids are going into a safe, hygienic environment in what is a COVID um, world at the moment. So... Yeah, good advice. Thank you. Good question. Um, so the other thing when you're thinking about your content is who your target market is. So for each different club, it's going to be 
it is going to be different. And sometimes your target market might not be the person who actually is playing the sport. So I said earlier, as part of your strategy, it might be that you're attracting those parents um, for those younger kids to play. So think about who the target market is that you're trying to attract to your club through um, the social channels or through the website and make sure that you're speaking to them. So think about how they like to speak, um, how they um, like to be communicated with, I guess, and make sure that you're being really consistent um, in the way that you're doing that. The best way that I've found in order to be able to, um, I guess, make sure that I'm consistent in talking to that particular target market is I create little avatars and I might name them up. So I might call them Sarah or I might call them um, Bob. And what I would do with those profiles is I would list all the things about them um, as if they were a real person. So I'd write down their age I'm, and it might even just be an age range. Um, I'd write down maybe what they... Um, talk like, what media they may consume. I think about what salary they might be on. I would think about, um, what else do I think about? Like how many kids they may have, all of those different details, I guess, that make that person who they are. And so I create this little avatar so that when I'm writing my posts, so for example, if I was writing on my page, I'd be typing and thinking, okay, is this um, written as if it was, I was talking to Sarah today or is this written as if I was talking to Bob? Um, just to make sure that I'm really consistent with that, um, talking to that target market. So that could be something that you could set up with with your club. I know that can be really difficult for a lot of you because you might have such a wide range of people that you're trying to target through your club, but I guess you can break it down to different levels. So you're going to have people who are your main target market that you really want to attract. So think about them first and then think of that secondary target market and those tertiary target markets. And you can do different posts that talk to those different target markets at times, even on the one social channel, but just, yeah, think about making sure that that post is specific to that target market when you speak to them. And one of the things that I noticed last week to Laura was that it was National Volunteer Week. And because I'm in that world and it's part of my community club space, I certainly looked at a number of websites as part of preparation for today. But I also, what, what do you think I would have liked to have seen, if I don't want to put you on the spot, but yeah, what do you think the clever clubs, clubs that were in touch with their market and wanted to resonate with their audience out there, what do you think they might have done last week with um, National Volunteer Week? Yeah, so um, on my website, I possibly would have updated the banner image to have a nice image that said, um, thank you. And it had like the volunteers volunteering on there. And then I'd have a little message about National Volunteer Week that they could click through to where we've thanked them on social media. I also would put up a post using some images of volunteers and saying thank you for being um, our volunteers. Without you guys, we wouldn't be able to run these clubs. So um, thank you for being able to do that. And we appreciate everything that you do sort of type of post. Is that what you're looking for? That is correct. 10 out of 10. Well done to Laura. <laughs> Brilliant answer. And we certainly saw a cross section of, of simple posts just saying we'd like to acknowledge the volunteers to some of the presidents, actually um, a video message. Um, others actually had their volunteer coordinator, which is a really important role across all community clubs, um, come in on thank and actually handing somebody a flowers or there might have been a voucher or something like that. So that's a really important way of, of as I said, finding a balance between your brand and then resonating with your membership demographics. So. Yeah, I think that's a really nice way to do it. There's some really great examples there of ways you could do different pieces of content. So the video from the president, um, having people being handed flowers, like there's some great posts there that would get great traction from their community on um, Facebook or Instagram with those posts. Yeah, and it's one of those things is it's, it's we have to sort of flip uh, the conversation is not to be intimidated or um, envious or jealous of clubs that do that, but rather think, oh, we can actually learn from those clubs. So if we see them doing it well, a bit like North Hobart Junior Footy Club, they're doing a good job with their square shop, then let's just take that lesson and think, well, okay, what do we need to do? What's the education and training that our club might need to, to get to that point? And off you go. There's your one step at a time. So. Yeah, no, and I think that's a great tactic for everybody to take on board is don't be afraid of whatever other people are doing. Go and actually look at it and use it as um, examples and write it down because you're going to be able to do it a little bit differently because each club is really different. Um, but if somebody's, yeah, work smarter, not harder. So if somebody's doing something really great, write it down and use it 
Um, that's how everybody, and any, any organisation, not just clubs, that's how they operate. They look at what other people are doing in the marketplace and then they think about how they could do that within their own business. So I would definitely recommend that, um, whether it be through websites or socials, go and write down some of those ideas and um, about how they're doing it and how you could possibly implement that in your club's marketing. Another great strategy. Hey, Talora, you're doing an awesome job. And I said we're nearly ticking over to an hour in our fourth of our webinar series. Um, we haven't got long to go, so stay tuned. But the great thing is once they're loaded up onto our Facebook and social media platforms, people can just watch them at their own pace. Beautiful thing about a webinar, if you're busy, you need to go and cook something or you need to go and have a run, you just press pause and you pick it back up. That's it. I'm so sorry, guys, that it's been going over. I love to talk and it's also really hard to be able to share all of this great information that I want to share with you right now. So I will try and keep it on track so that we can finish this very soon. It's all good. We're doing fine. Um, so I think we've already spoken this a little about this um, already, but when you have your target market identified, just think about the tone of voice of your um, club page and how you want to be portrayed with that voice. So think about... Um, how you want to speak. Is it casual? Is it factual? Is it informative? Are you friendly? Are you open? All of those different things that create, I guess, a tone of voice. And what can be really good about doing that is if you have multiple people managing your social media within the club, it just ensures that voice is consistent across all of the channels if everybody has an understanding of what that tone of voice is. Um, if you go to Google and you look up tone of voice charts, you'll find just a little simple picture and it will have a couple of different options for you to select out of four categories. And you can sit there and you could tick which one applies for your club and then make sure that everybody who is writing any pieces of content has that tone of voice chart so they know that that's how they write um, for that particular, any piece of content for that particular club. Um, and the other thing to think about when you are writing um, content is what are the goals that you want people to take? So not every post is going to be about action. It's going to be more about you just want to tell people about something that's exciting that's happening within your club or it might be thanking people like the volunteers in your club. But you also might have some that are more specific around getting new sponsors or they might be around um, getting people to join your club. So think about those goals and the actions that you're trying to create with the content that you're writing. Um, so the most important thing that um, I guess will help you guys, and it was touches on a little bit more about what we were just talking about with going through and um, looking at what other people are doing out there to see um, what they're doing so you can write it all down, is to actually plan your content. So this is really, um, I guess, helpful when it comes to social media. For those of you who are managing social media, you may already find it difficult to think of new content pieces to write about all the time. Um, so by planning your content, it will help you, I guess, ease the pressure from thinking of posts rather than just putting a post up, you're able to just sit there and actually have an idea already articulated that you know is going to be of good value to put out into the um, social channels. So as part of whenever I'm managing a social media account, I create this um, content plan. And this is just an example of what it would look like. The first part of that plan is I would brainstorm all the different types of posts that I would want to do. So I'll come up with four to six different category ideas and then I'll list all the types of posts that I could do underneath them. So in this one, I tried to use it more of an example because it's quite easy to follow. Um, so digital tips, I've got talk about email spam, shortcuts on keyboards, like the different um, web browser platforms. And then I've got things like apps and programs and I've listed all the different types of apps that I wanna use. To help put it in context for you guys about what you could have as categories. So you could have a category called Teams and then underneath Teams, you could have the different teams that actually exist within your club, but then have things like Team Profile, Team Anniversaries, Team Member um, Birthdays, um, team milestones within the club, all of those different things that might relate to something to do with a person in the team. You then might have a category called behind the scenes and that behind the scenes might be sharing things about um, the club's history, might be sharing things that are happening um, within the club's behind the scenes now. So you might share, like if you've got a new building happening, you could share a bit about that information. You could do a bit of the behind the scenes before a game starts, maybe what their warm-up activity is, um, 
maybe the chat at half time, for example. So all of those different things that um, can be used as a behind the scenes category. Then your other category could be something like education and tips. So you might have a, a Pope thing there saying, um, share a weekly tip on how to keep fit, um, have a tip about what our players do to cool down, have a tip about the best stretch. So like all, think about all of those different things that you might wanna post about, I guess. The most important thing is when I do this brainstorm is I try and have a couple of people involved because as everything um, in life, if there's more than one um, head there, you can think about like one more than, more than one brain, I mean, um, you're able to sit there and you can come up with ideas that maybe you might not have thought of. Um, so yeah, a really great tool to, I guess, think of all the different ideas. And what I like to use this for is, is a continuous working document. So I continuously add to it. And so as part of that, that's where that research of looking at other people and they might do something really cool. I would then put it on this brainstorm and then I can think about how I could do that within my own um, page. The second part about planning your content is to think about the channels that you're posting on. So if you've got Facebook and Instagram, you can then come to here and schedule it out onto the different days of the week. Um, what's also great is that it ties in with holidays. So like we were talking about with National Volunteer Week, that would appear in that holidays column. And then in that local events column, that's where you could actually put in any events that your club is hosting so that you can make sure that you um, are putting content out there about that event that's happening a couple of weeks before and then doing your reminder post. So it's a great way to make sure that you're doing those posts um, before you need to. Um, but also maybe you might even do put into your local events column when game days are on so that you can do those posts in advance about those as well. So it's just a great way to map it out, I guess, and make sure that everybody's on the same page. Um, this doesn't show the full shot, but as part of this, you can have all of your different channels. So if you're on Facebook, Instagram, um, TikTok, for example, you could have all of them there. There's also could be a column of responsibility. So you could assign who's responsible for doing that particular post and making sure that it happens. So just a great resource and tool um, that you can use. And I will provide Andrew with a blank template um, so that you guys can start that content plan yourselves. It's something that we quite often go through with people in the digital ready session coaching session. So something that we can do with you as well. But yeah, I will provide a blank template for you guys to be able to start that um, content planner to plan your content out. Um, so we're nearly finished so we're just going to go through some content tips now. So the first thing that I'm going to go through is just some quick writing tips. Um, never say I. Make sure your content is always written in third person. So even though you might be writing the post yourself, you've got to remember you're from a, um, an organisation or a, and as part of that organisation, there's more than one of you. So you need to make sure you're using we, our, us. Always write um, for the consumer. So focus on your customer, not your club. So always think about what problem are you trying to solve for them by sharing this information. Um, you will have some pieces that are a little bit more, I guess, informative and about your club, but where you can try and think about um, writing for that customer and how they would want to read that post. So for example, you might say, um, tired of the kids being held up inside all day, trying to find them a sport to get them out of the house. Have you thought about trying foosball? And then you can come and talk a little bit about who your club is and that's a way that you're talking. So you're helping them by identifying a problem that they might be having and then giving them the solution of your club as the answer. The next writing tip is to be consistent. I've mentioned it already. It's really important to be consistent across all of your marketing channels because it is a big part of your brand and you wanna make sure that your brand is um, the same on every channel. And the last one is for those of you who, um, I guess are a little bit more further in depth with your um, websites is that make sure um, if you're doing SEO, which is search engine optimization and getting that ranking happening on Google, that you're not keyword stuffing your content too much to try and rank too heavily. So you're not using that keyword every sentence that you possibly can. Um, SEO is a completely separate topic that I could talk hours about and we do have a presentation completely on SEO if you do want to learn about it on the Digital Ready website it's just been uploaded this week so a great resource and tool for you to access to learn more about that. 
Uh, the rule of content, so the 80-20 rule. So this refers to when we're writing on social media, the way that our posts should flow. So 80% of what we write about on social media should be more updates that benefit your followers. So that could be those team profiles. It could be those behind the scenes, those educational tips. The other 20% is where we can actually promote our um, club. So using the rule of 80-20, you might have four updates that benefit your followers and then one update that purely is about driving new people to come to your club. So we're, we're taking on new people or it might even be promoting that you've got that shop functionality on your website. And the only reason that we suggest this rule and then I guess the reason that it works um, is because a lot of people who follow us on social media are there for that community aspect. They just want to know what's happening in the club. They don't want to be sold something. They, they um, just want to be, um, I guess, felt feel involved. So it just helps break it up a little bit. Um, when you are thinking about your content, and I guess when it comes to the brainstorming for that content plan, you might start to realise that you've got lots of ideas there, but think about how they could be told in story arcs. Don't try and put all of your information into one post because it can be quite, um, I guess, overwhelming for the person who's reading it if there's quite a lengthy um, piece of content for them to read. So think about teasing out that story and thinking of all the subtopics that could come off it. So for example, using the photo that I've got here um, of the Bowls Club, we could do up one post that's more about them just winning these medals at the particular national event they were at. You then might then do a subtopic off that and you could pick one per each um, individual and talk about their specific win for that day. Um, you might then do a story about what they, um, how their journey to get to that particular point was. So just thinking about all of those different subtopics that could come off the one piece of content, I guess, so you're not overwhelming your audience. Um, when it comes to writing content for your website, think about what you offer. So you need to make sure that when your um, traffic comes to your website, straight away they know who your club is. So you might have your club logo or you should have your club logo. You need to have images um, with your club so that people can um, see what's happening with that club and maybe a little bit of an introduction about who you are and what you guys do. So I always like to think about the um, who, what, when, where and why is when I'm first going to a website to make sure that that's all really clear um, when somebody opens up the home page of a website. And to Laura, just while you're on there, like that one of the important things is that Millennials who are all connected, and I think going back about 10 slides there, you said 99% of, of millennials are, are connected. So if they're moving to an area or uh, they're building a house or they're looking for a club, they'll go to those social media platforms. And if they aren't, they'll make that decision pretty quickly about your club based on what they see and read. And if it's not inviting them to come along, if it's not showing that you've got some values driving your organisation, that it's going to be a happy, safe place for their kid, I'll simply just click to the next one, you know? So that's, that's yeah. why it's important. As I said, it's the shop front for your club because everybody will, will, will test out what's in their immediate area via a range of, as I said, social media and digital platforms. Yeah, couldn't agree more. I'm personally, I've been that person. So I've moved to a new area. Um, I've gone to Google straight away to look up and I went through a couple of different options. Um, as I spoke about earlier, I did go to a website first because that's where 89% of us will go first. And straight away, when I got to some people's websites, they appeared a little bit old fashioned. I had really old images on the site and I thought, mm, not sure if this is a modern enough club for me. I then went to another website and I had photos of um, people having lots of fun and there being lots of cool events um, happening throughout their committee. And I just thought, oh, that's what I was looking for. I want to go somewhere, I want to play because I want to play a sport, but I also want to go somewhere where I can have fun and um, meet new people in the area. So that was something that attracted me to that particular club was that I got to a website and I was like, okay, no, they look like they're having that. And then I took that further by going through their social media just to reconfirm that I definitely um, wasn't like that that feeling was right and I was correct. So when I went to their social media, I got that feeling as well. Fantastic. And again, we, we, we've talked about it a couple of times during today is let's not be envious or jealous of, of, her, of all the awesomeness that's happening with some clubs. 
you know, take it on, do a bit of an audit of your own club, find out where you are, and then reach out. You can contact Clubs Tasmania or you can reach out to the Digital Ready Program and there is a heap of support available there to help you start your journey so that, you know, in a couple of years, you could have the whiz-bang social media digital platforms that help you engage with your sponsors, attract members, increase participation and ultimately increase your revenue so that your club can be, you know, thriving and surviving into the future. Exactly. And I didn't mention something earlier, but I know that there are a number of councils across Tasmania that have specific grants for clubs. And one of those grants sometimes is around those digital means and putting that money towards developing a website. So that could be something to look into as well. Yeah, that's a great point. And there's a number of grants that are available at the moment. We've advertised them on our Facebook page. Um, recently, RACT had a grant. Hydro Tasmania have got one out. And I know Tas Community Fund will have a round. They're all targeted to COVID. And so, um, again, creating that digital um, suite and platform to ensure that your club is, as I said, uh, sustainable and viable into the future seems to me to be a pretty valid um, submission case. So, as I said, we need to get onto the Digital Ready website and, and sign up or you can contact Clubs Tasmania and we'll, we'll steer you in the right direction. All right, Miss Talora, we'll let right. you keep going. We're nearly there. <laughs> um, so the last, uh, so the, what we're talking about now is when we're thinking about our content on our website, again, we want to think about that target audience. So who is it for? Make sure that your um, products that are on there or the service through the club that you're offering um, is talking to that particular person. So tailor your message to those particular people. And also think about what problem are you solving for people when they come to your website? So for you guys, it would be that probably people are going there because they want to learn about your club. They want to see if it's the right fit for them, especially if they're new to the area and they're looking to join a club. Or like I said, they might be new to the sport completely and just looking around to see what's available. So make sure that when you um, are putting your website together, I guess, make sure that your tabs are very clear about how they can see what you guys are offering them so that they, you can solve their problem a little bit faster. Um, share that story on your website. So make sure that you have a page that's about you guys, have that history there because that is going to be really important for some people. They really value learning about a club's history and what, how you guys formed, um, maybe that you've had a few changes along the way. That can be really important to some people, especially if they're looking for a, a club that they know that they had an old grandparent play for and they might have had a different name back in the day. So they can find that history out through your story. And that really helps connect with some people. So make sure that's on your website. And, and Laura, most... that, that storytelling is so important. If you think back to when you go to school, and you learn through, you know, story on the mat with the kindergarten teacher or you go camping with your family and it's the stories that, or the yarns that your parents or your grandparents might share you. The natural human way to learn and, and pick up and acquire knowledge is, is through story. So again, it's no different in the digital platform. You have gotta tell a story that, that connects people and gives them a reason to either connect with you, visit your club or, you know, join. Exactly right, yeah, couldn't agree more. Um, so the other thing that is really important on a website is you need to make sure that you have an action that you want people to take. So for a lot of you, it is going to be a contact form. Um, that might be a contact number. It might be an email address. But I would highly suggest you might even have an inquiry form on the website so that people can easily connect with you um, and contact you in the future. So making sure that you have that as a clear option up the top, maybe on each page when um, you've written that content, you think about how they might feel after they've read that content and maybe it links through to that content a uh, contact page as well. The other goal, if you did have a shop on there, you would make sure that shop's really highlighted so that people can find that really easily. So we need to think about, I guess, that user experience when people come to our websites and what actions they're going to take when they get to a particular page and they've read a little bit more information. What's the next port of call that they might need to go to and make sure we're highlighting, I guess, in that navigation menu, those key, key things, which is normally the contact form and the shop now button. Um, so just some photography tips. Um, as I've spoken already about, we all have really great features on our phone, so use them. If it is possible, invest in some good photography and you could do that through getting somebody on board as a sponsor to come and take some images at a cheaper rate or they might do it as a um, goods in kind sort of arrangement. So just 
make sure that your photos um, where you need them to be, especially on a website. Um, you want to have those really great photos showcasing your club. Um, and there are also some photo editing apps that you can use for your photography that I'll go through in a moment. Um, some video tips. Um, make sure the quality of your video, um, we don't need to have expensive videography um, set up, but we can use our phone as we can with um, photographs, but just make sure that there's minimal background noise and always ensure that there's movement within the first three seconds because otherwise people will get bored and not continue to watch the rest of the video. Um, if you do have an opportunity to create a really high quality um, professionally filmed video, you might use that as, I guess, one of your key focuses to really draw people in, but then use just normal little videos, I guess, with that minimal background noise and movement to reaffirm those values. Um, something that I haven't spoken about when it comes to social media, but could be really important to use is through live video. So live video is probably the biggest trend right now. And especially with COVID-19, it's increased even further, but it's a great way for your clubs to go on live Facebook or on a live Instagram and just talk directly to your audience about in anything in particular. So it could be around what you're doing as a club for um, post COVID-19 to ensure that you're a safe club. It could be doing a live video that talks about um, when your club's going back and, and how um, it may look for that particular club. So it might be that you're not allowed to have audiences there. So you need to communicate that. So where you feel comfortable and you've got somebody that's happy to be in front of a camera, have a go at that live video. It's, a little bit daunting to start with, but I can promise you it's quite easy. I, after a bit of time, you forget to even remember that there's a camera there in front of you and you just start talking and um, you just keep going until you finish the message that you need to. And I guess the most important thing when I talk about live video is that it doesn't need to be perfect. We're all human. We all make mistakes. And so people are quite forgiving when they see that live video because they see that genuineness in that video. And we only need to look at, I guess, what um, Peter Gutwin's done every day by going live um, to see that that's how that can work really effectively. I've also got some ideal video time lengths, so I won't go through each of these with you, but you will be able to access through this through the copy of the slides. So just in case some of you were wondering what an ideal time length for a video on some of the social platforms are, I've popped them in there for you. Um, last things that we're going to go through are just some tools to help you. All of these are free for you to access and anybody can access them. The first one is Canva. It's probably my absolute favourite and the one that I would recommend the most to anyone. It's going to help be a time saver when it comes to creating Facebook and Instagram posts and getting them to the right size that that image needs to be. Um, the cool thing with Canva is you can add text to your images. You could upload your logo. If you have particular fonts that go with your logo, you can make sure that they're included in Canva. Um, Canva will let you create flyers. So if you needed to do any flyers, um, menus for your canteen, um, invites for your events, all of that can be created through this tool. When you do go to set up a Canva account, it will ask you to sign up to the platform and it will encourage you to pay for their paid version. I've never personally used the paid version. I've only ever used the free, um, free tool and I've never had any issues with that and I've been using it for about four or five years now. So definitely something worth having a look at and it will help save you time and um, make everything look on brand and um, nice for your club. The next tool is Emojipedia. Um, for those of you who use social media and like to incorporate some emojis throughout that content, which is an important thing to do to help keep the Facebook and the Instagram algorithms um, pushing your posts out further to, further to more of your audience. Um, you might find when you're flicking through finding that emoji, it can be quite frustrating because you can't find the one you want easily. Um, Emojipedia allows you to search what you're looking for. So if you're looking for a ball, you'd be able to type that in and straight away you'd be get that option come up and then you can copy and paste that into your content. So it will save you time. Unsplash, now I've put this here. Um, I wouldn't imagine most of you would need to use this because you're able to capture that images of your clubs quite easily. Um, but in case you do need some stock images, you can come to a site like Unsplash as they have some really great free hive um, 
free images that are high resolution for you to access. So you just simply go in there and type. And so you could type in there um, tennis and then they would come up with some images of people playing tennis um, so that you could use those potentially through your social posts or through your website. Um, for those of you who are managing, I guess, the club's Facebook page, in order to separate your personal page from the business page, you can download an app called Facebook Pages. <coughs> Sorry. Hey, Talora, just while you're catching your breath there and having a drink, we have got a question there from one of the clubs which has said that uh, they've got 14 teams in their club and recently they have... You right? Yeah, sorry. That's okay. You, they recently had... Uh, they've got 14 teams in their club um, and up until they've got somebody who manages all the social media pages and they used to just be able to do one feed, but, that, but they're saying that Facebook recently changed um, and so now they have to post individually to all those pages across the, the club. Is there a solution for that question? Yes, so Facebook have changed that recently. The best suggestion that I would um, try is to look up the Facebook Creator Studio um, and that would allow you to be able to tick the pages that you want that post to go across so that it could go to all of those 14 pages more easily. All right, hey, great tip. Thank you for that. That's okay. Um, I know I've personally come across that issue recently with the own, my own social channels that I manage. Um, what Facebook are trying to do is to push us to this creator studio um, so that you can um, use it to put your posts out there. It's a really good tool to use. I might even have it as a slide in here next to schedule your posts. So if you've got somebody who doesn't have a lot of time and they need to sit down one night and do a couple of their posts for during the week, then they're able to sit down and um, have those posts written up and scheduled ready to go out at a time when they know their audience is online. Um, it also now lets us schedule them for Instagram through this creator studio as long as you have your pages linked. So possibly um, a tool that I would go and look up on Google is just Facebook creator studio and then it would just use your normal login details and bring up those business pages and you can have a play around with that. Um, the other app that I've got here is for your phone. So what it does is it just helps separate your Facebook page from your business page. So the Facebook business is the um, orange flag there. And so it just means that when you're on that app, you know that you're commenting as that um, club, club business page rather than being posting as yourself through your no normal Facebook app. Uh, Grammarly is a free tool. Um, it's a Chrome extension tool. So for those of you who use Chrome as a web browser, um, you can add this for free. What it does is it checks your spelling and it checks your grammar to make sure that we're always being as accurate as possible um, because there's nothing worse than having bad grammar in our content and posts. Um, for those of you who use videos, you may like to add captions to them. There are some um, tools available in the marketplace and these tools also allow us to edit videos if you ever need to do that. So all of them are free. Um, in particular, I've used Filmora Video Editor and I found that quite easy to use. I also find it a little bit, all of these a little bit frustrating because I still have to heavily type the captions um, at a time. There is an option to auto automate the um, captions, but it's never accurate. So even if you use that, you need to go back over and check that they um, what it needs to actually say, not some gibberish that it's just interpreted. It's a little bit like when you get that voice to text message and you, it never exactly says what it was meant to say. Um, PicMonkey is a really um, great tool to create collages and um, so you can create different collages with different layouts depending on the num number of images that you have to add to that photo. Um, Biteable, this is a tool that helps um, create videos. Um, it adds little animation features in there if you would like to use those or you could add slide titles or um, if you wanted to put names of players up you could do that through this tool. It does have a paid version and a free version. I've used both depending on what I've been doing um, but maybe have a look at the free version first and see if it will do what you need it to do. Facetune, this is a little bit of a vain app. Um, so if you have people in your um, photos that are complaining that they have too many bags under their eyes or they have a pimple that they want airbrushed out, you can use Facetune to be able to do that. Um, the reason that I actually have used Facetune a lot is that sometimes when we have posts, our pictures taken, 
they might have something that needs just to be taken out of the photo. So a couple of years ago, I had some professional photographs done um, for a hotel accommodation. They'd taken this beautiful photo near the um, fireplace, but somebody didn't realize that they'd left a $5 note on the table and it ruined the whole image because all you could see was this $5 note. So what we did was we used Facetune to airbrush that $5 note out and make it look the color of the coffee table so that nobody could notice it. Um, and that's it for our presentation today. So I'm just going to remind you all a little bit about the Digital Ready program and why I'm here today. So the Digital Ready program enables each of um, club as having their own ABN to um, get two hours free mentoring every calendar year. Um, so you can get um, book in your session for that through the website um, that I've got there or the hotline number. If you wanted to um, as well, I can let Andrew um, share my email address so that you can email me directly to set up that digital ready appointment if you'd like to have myself as a coach. Otherwise, there is a whole team of coaches that you can choose through um, the digital ready website and you can have a look at who else is available. And I'm sure like based on today, Talora, you're going to be very, very busy, so which is fantastic. Yeah, I um, hope so. Of course, I really there's the contact. Well, sorry, I would really encourage people to um, sign up to the Digital Ready program. It's free, it helps you in so many ways, even if it's more to just review what you're already doing. Um, you're going to find that you'll learn tips out of it um, no matter what. I've had some people that continuously come to it and they've been coming to it for the whole nine years that it's been running. And they say that every year they learn something new and they just absolutely love it. I think it's a great tool for you guys to be able to have access to not, um, you and Queen, Tasmania and Queensland are the only states that offer this program. So it is a really great initiative um, that's out there for us to access. So would highly encourage. Oh, yeah, all of our community clubs. And look, what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll start to um, advertise that across our digital platforms um, from this Friday, uh, which means that it's all up there. But again, if you if you you're not comfortable to uh, to contact Talora or the team at Digital Ready. You can reach out to us and we'll point you in the right direction. We might have a conversation of where your starting point might be. Excellent. Um, right. and yeah, I've just got those contact details of Andrew there so that you can make sure that you contact him for anything that you needed to as well. All right. On behalf of um, the community clubs industry and specifically clubs Tasmania, to Laura Denman Francis, thank you so much for giving us 90 minutes of your time this morning. It's been educational and informative, but most of all enjoyable. Uh, we really do appreciate uh, the, the time that you've given us today. Thank you so much. No worries. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a great privilege to be able to speak with you and I hope that I've been able to help you in some way. Um, find a new way to communicate through that digital world. I understand it can be really tricky to navigate. It can be quite overwhelming and I'm sure some of you are going away from this thinking, oh, there's so much to do. But just take it um, one step at a time and know that what you're doing will help improve your club for the future. No worries at all. Okay, again, Francis, thank you so much for your time. And for the community club industry, um, tune in next week where we will do um, episode five of our Winter Webinar series where we'll welcome Jordan Lovell from the Bendigo Bank. And he's going to talk to us about the importance of having a cashless club and why that will help reduce the workload on volunteers and also improve um, and reduce your risk in your club. So, again, that'll be ready 11 o'clock next Wednesday. All right, bye for now.